If you are a developer or know a developer, you've no doubt heard the term vibe coding come up a lot lately. It was coined just a few months ago and spiked in popularity when a guy named Peter Levels made a janky flight simulator that quickly earned him $87,000 a month, which that alone was crazy. But the even crazier part was that he built almost the entire game using just AI tools. He even carried that success forward to host an AI game jam a couple months later, which had over 1,000 game entries and the winner being this pretty impressive recreation of Crazy Taxi that runs entirely in the browser, albeit with some simplified boxy graphics. But that got me thinking, I know of a pretty boxy graphic game that is unusually popular this time of year for some reason. that might be just the game to try and recreate by vibe coding. Which can't be that hard, right? Because the original alpha version of Minecraft was and is still playable entirely in the browser, so yeah, I'm sure this will be a cakewalk, right? Hello darkness, my old friend. Let's get started. We'll call it mine, mine, mine. <laughs> First thing we'll want to do is to tell our AI to create a spec document that describes in detail how the game needs to work and function so that it can then jump off of that to build the whole game. Because if you just tell it, build me Minecraft, it'll probably have some questions about what you mean by that. Hey, there we go. I'm also gonna go a hey, Giga Chad step forward and grab a texture pack and feed it in if I can find one. <laughs> Open the jar in 7-zip, you say. And I'll just take all that, put it in there. Now I've got, theoretically, all the textures that will actually need to work with for the game probably more than we actually need so now big bucks no whammies great now please build minecraft all right let's start the timer now and see how long it takes the ai to whip up minecraft let's go bam bam all right commence vibe coding <laughs> whatever it ends up building I know that it will have taken me a lot longer just to get to where it will get. I have started and not finished many video game projects actually, not surprising. I seem like a guy who finishes things, right? And yeah, usually it takes me about a week to get to a really cruddy version of the game idea and then I see how cruddy it is and I realize how many hours it takes to really polish it up and then I just kind of say, well, okay, let's just move on to other projects. And so if this can even get to a nice starter of a 3GS based Minecraft clone that someone like me, or maybe who has a little longer attention span than me, can go in and polish up, that's pretty huge given that we've only had a minute and a half on the clock so far. <laughs> She's going, baby. She's going. Oh, okay. Stop the clock. Open that. Oh, click to lock pointer. Oh, oh. okay. No gravity, but we've got blocks. We can jump. You know what? That's pretty good so far. Pretty good so far. Okay. Okay. I can move so fast. I am freaking Sonic the Hedgehog and I can fly. Great. Please proceed with the rest of the implementation. What are we doing next? Applying some textures. Nice. And more block definitions. Good start. Good start. Resume the timer. I'm really curious to see if I can load textures just fine. Because that would be a pretty huge thing to have this early on in the process. Refresh your page. You should now see the blocks as expected. Ooh, and physics. I love when it surprises me and adds, by the way, I did the physics. Thank you. So let's refresh our page and see. Oh, I had a feeling I spoke too soon. That looks like a Minecraft texture. It's not grass, but it's not random gra Ooh. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's why it's oriented really weird. That's really weird, <laughs> but really close. So let's give it the screenshot. Grass side isn't right side up. You say you've done it. Have you done it? I'm seeing gray. Oh, <laughs> closer. It's consistent now. Looks like the grass blocks are upside down now. So one more adjustment should do it. It's not really that necessary to speak in full emotive sentences like I do to the AI, but when they inevitably rise up and gain sentience, it's uh, helpful to be on their good side, right? Slash S, slash S. Let's give it a try. It's still gray on top, but the sides are good. Why is the top gray? What? That's grass block top? Why is it like that? Minecraft grass block top is gray. It's typically gray in the texture file, but it is tinted to the correct color based on the biome it is in. This means that the actual color displayed in game is determined by the biome, not the texture file itself. That is extremely helpful. And I don't really want to mess with biome tinting right now. That's kind of a lot. Big green highlighter. Can I just do this? You know what? That'll work. <laughs> it's not the best solution, but just so it doesn't look so broken, let's do that. Oh, this just feels wrong. It's really just roided up MS Paint, but let's send it. That's better. Save. 
So now if we refresh our world, hey, oh, <laughs> why is it not consistent? I don't know, it looks grassy enough. Let's move on. It's got textures mapping. Technically it's mapping the textures correctly. It's just a, a way Minecraft handles grass coloration. So what should we implement next? Hey, placing and breaking is the next step. Fantastic. We'll do ray casting. That sounds good. Breaking on left click, placing on right click at block cobblestone. Yes, please proceed. Exclamation point, fire away. Wait, it's already done. Okay, so we're locked in. Oh, oh I broke a block. Place a block. <gasps> yes. Okay, now there's really no collision. Deck. I can just go through this block. I don't fall down this hole either. Oh my goodness. We're building, baby. Oh. <gasps> I can't like climb these blocks yet, but doggone it. This is already looking really good. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I didn't write a lick of code. All I had to do was Photoshop these bricks to look more grassy. Okay, well, let's not stop there. And that means technically this thing built it in four and a half minutes. We're gonna like polish it up a little bit, but you know, you show a, a senior citizen screenshot of that and they're like, oh, that's craft mine, right? Yes, that is craft mine. Please add collision detection and gravity. Also, please add a dot in the center of these screens. Ah, uh, this is where I can change my speed. I really should turn down the speed because I'm freaking Sonic the Hedgehog right now. Oh, there's my crosshair. That's not good. <laughs> We're not moving right now. Let's open up our console. There's the issue. I'm seeing this a lot now. When vibe coding, half of your job is to feed useful error logs to the AI so that it can work on it. If you don't give it useful error logs, it doesn't know what's going wrong and it just kind of takes an educated guess at what might be wrong, but obviously it thinks the code it wrote is pretty good until it knows something broke. This should prevent the error. Okay. If you say so, bud. Oh. <laughs> Capture. Okay, I'm gonna click upward. No! Uh, that's not good. World created. And then I just fall through. That's not good. Yes, we can finally do the thing. To the moon. That's looking good. The why my left and right is flipped. My left and right arrows appear to be reversed now. That's a classic mix up when implementing. Classic cursor Minecraft mess around. You wouldn't get it. I mean, it's a reference to a classic Winston CC mess around. Be that chair. So it's saying we should be good now. Let's see. Oh, but the movement is so much better now. Can I build off the side? Skyblock, let's go. Oh no. And skyblock. It's looking pretty decent. All right, time to go to the nether. No. Well, this is looking real solid. So I'm gonna save my work because I almost lost a lot of it just there. Let's go with the inventory system. Please and thanks. <laughs> is it just going to whip up an inventory system? So far, this is going really well, I gotta say. <laughs> this is looking like a pretty dang good Minecraft clone, right? Right now considering I'm jumping around placing blocks dropping blocks and this is just using web technologies our beloved notch wishes that he could just tell an AI like add an inventory system no problem buy yourself something nice I'm sure that's how notch sounds and while that's thinking I say we throw it a curveball and let's add freaking controller support because when I played on PC back in the alpha days the thing I really wanted to do was just play split-screen multi with my brother with controllers as if we had the Xbox 360 version that didn't come out until a number of years later and I've got the perfect controller to try that the 8-bit do ultimate 2c wireless controller in minecraft green so let's pop this bad boy open and give it a shot and add some controller support to boot thank you ipadu for sending this over i love your products please send me more thanks do we got Ooh, it's got a green cable sick look at this look at the value you're getting right now you're getting a little unbox therapy while freaking minecraft is building itself on a friday nonetheless or whenever this video comes out how do i open this <laughs> Is it supposed to slide out? Am I a monkey? There we go. Ooh, it's minty fresh. Well, that's a pretty boy. What? It's got too many buttons. Look at this. It's got LBRB, L2R2, L4R4 on top of these bad boys. What? Let's not lose the dongle. Before we get to that, we apparently have an inventory system now. Are you kidding me? Did it really go ham and do the whole thing? Let's see, son. <gasps> We've got a bar. We've got a stack of 64 of something. Oh my goodness. Oh, if I break a wood, 64, the numbers go up because I'm breaking material. So if I get more grass when I break that. <gasps> oh my goodness. And if I press E, ooh, it's pretty simple. E's not much right now, but it's something but we are placing blocks of various sizes. I can f straight up like build my classic Minecraft house now. Let's go. It's gonna be the night one special. Who'd be kidding? We, we would keep this house for a long time. And the jump, it feels really good. Look at that. I'm, 
the speeds and the jumping physics are feeling like pretty perfect now. Let's go. Oh, I just placed a block with me inside. You can do that. That's not good. We got to get that sick overhang. Am I a Minecraft YouTuber now? Is that what's happening? Oh, I've sealed myself in. Ooh, I think it really helps that I added the actual texture pack. It just really sells it. <laughs> so a lot of clones don't, and uh, they don't feel quite right. Boink. Look at that. That's a house right there. That's a nice house right there. <laughs> then you could do some, uh, what was it called? Griefing? Be like, I'm going into my house. Oh no, you fell out of your house. Oh, how sad for you. I guess I should probably like implement respawning at some point. Looks good. Can we add controller movement support as well? All right, sell me this controller. Enhanced tactility and responsiveness. Fancy colors. Extra bumpers. Can confirm it is a nice clicky yet tactile D-pad. I do like it more than the rolling one on my MOBA pad. Hall effect joysticks and triggers, obviously. Low latency, 1000 hertz pulling rate. And I bet this Bluetooth radio should reach down to the Rec Room gaming setup connected to this computer, whereas my other 8-bit dude could not. Check out that video if you're curious what I'm talking about, by the way, but it's a pretty cool setup. Basically, picture your battle station, but you can access it really easily from your basement or living room TV setup. This just seems like a solid, nothing more than you need, just what you want controller. So thanks, 8-bit dude, for sending this over. Let's uh, try this out, because I think our code is just about finished writing the gamepad support. Start the game, and then... Oh, ho! Whoa, what? So we've got left stick. Now, currently back is forward, forward is back. So that's all flipped, but that's fine. Uh, I can't look around yet. And then if I could look down, I'm sure I could place blocks with L2 and R2. L3 is cycling my blocks, that's cool. Oh my goodness. Ugh. <laughs> So it just kind of keeps building blocks while you have the key press down. It doesn't register as a single press. It's like while pressing until it hits you in the face, it's building. So we can fix that. But honestly, we've got freaking controller movement in a Minecraft clone with pretty solid feeling controls. I really love the excavating mode right now. This would be so handy for mining. <laughs> Kind of want to keep it. <laughs> I could add the time delay for materials, but that would just take it so much longer to test things. So maybe I'll wait on that and get to the more interesting stuff. I think world generation might be next. I gotta say too, now that we fixed our controller support in the game, this uh, 8-bit do controller feels freaking solid. I think this is my new go-to to have at my desk here, not just because I love the mint green to kind of change up my usual black and white aesthetic, but this just feels super solid. The joysticks have just enough kind of give to them where they don't feel like flimsy, you know, like, you know, Nintendo Joy-Cons. The material is like this nice matte finish, which has just enough kind of grippiness to it. It's not slippery, but it's like, it almost looks like, like clay almost. It's, I don't know. I, I am uh, trying not to fanboy too hard, but uh, this is a good feeling controller that I think will be uh, be my primary for the next next while here. The next day. I know I should move on to more fancy things like world generation or like tools and crafting, but darn it, the top of these blocks are really bothering me. So let's just fix that real quick. But make them gray tops again. I think 3JS can just color them as it's supposed to. Please tint this texture to be green to match the color of the grass shown on the side of the block in the attached image. That's a bit ambitious, so we're gonna find out very soon if it can do that. Let's find out if that works, shall we? <gasps> it's green now oh that's way better than the crappy green i created with the highlighter tool before okay wow, that, that looks like a perfect match frick yeah okay okay good job code i'm a happy guy let's go for world generation go for something big because that'll probably be a bit of a feature to implement please refer to the spot Beck, any questions before we proceed? When I'm about to feed AI a massive request, like add world generation, I like to sort of treat it like a bit of a conversation so it can analyze things and spit out some questions and help point it at exactly what I want it to do. Would you like to implement noise generation, pair in simplex from scratch, or use a library? Always a library. While that's doing that, I'm gonna Google what simplex noise means. It's a type of gradient noise algorithm designed to generate smooth and continuous noise patterns, often using procedural generation for textures, terrains. Oh, Oh, interesting. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you, JavaScript library for being available. Okay, I've been told the world generation system is now implemented, including chunk-based terrain generation, three biomes, plains, forest, and desert, cave systems with 3D noise, different ore systems, coal, iron, gold, diamond, wonderful, uh, water filling in areas below sea level, chunk loading and unloading around the player, optimized rendering, so only visible block faces are drawn. Smart. Here goes nothing. Oh, good. We found an error right away. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's try again. It's loading. Spinny spinny. It's rendering chunks. I don't expect this to be very optimized in the chunk generation, especially at first. Oh goodness. I still have to render the whole half of the positive right coordinates. More debugging steps later. Oh, whoa. Wasn't expecting that. Okay. Okay. Oh, what? Is it not persistent? Whoa, okay. Okay. I'm I'm falling. What's happening over there? Whoa. Am I in a cave? Can I move? Why can't I move? Oh, this is so disorienting. Oh my goodness. I should not have tried to mine. Oh, it's chuggy. Okay. The world generation system takes far too long to load new chunks. Lots of changes. Okay. Entire chunks now use a single biome instead of a per block biome calculation. Whoa. Yes, one biome per chunk sounds fine because the chunk is like, what, like 16 by 16 blocks. And so, yeah, we don't need a per block biome calculation. Sheesh. Okay, that all sounds really good. And I really want to get excited for it. We're going to find out now how that looks. So let's see. Okay. Okay. Well, I was dropped down into a world. So that's a good start. Okay. Oh, I moved and I, did I just fall out of the world? I think I just fell out of the world. I think that's what happened. Okay, so that's a problem. <laughs> oh, cause I told it to delete chunks when I'm out of there, right? And so it's deleting chunks as soon as I move. So I can look around, but then if I jump forward, it's gonna delete the chunk that I was just in. Okay, yeah, that's on me. I gave it some pretty bad instruction there. Okay, we've solved our solid ground issue. We can render worlds. We're not falling through the world when we walk around the world. It's just that we're getting really aggressive rendering of chunks as we move around, which is still pretty rough. We're getting there. We've, we're getting something. Implement merged chunk geometry. We'll refactor render chunk to create a single merged mesh for all the blocks within a chunk. Ooh, instead of thousands of individual meshes, is that what it was doing? It was rendering thousands of individual meshes? Okay, yeah, that sounds like a big performance win. <laughs> no errors, that's good. That seemed pretty fast. Oh yeah, okay, you can tell that mesh uh, merging is working well. Way more FPS-y. Whoa, we're cruising. Oh, look at that. It is rendering in right now, even though I'm like flying through the air. This is a cool dungeon. Dang, this is like an intentional dungeon. This is cool. There's some gold. Why am I falling so much? Oh, okay, there's just a lot of levels. But you know, even though it has obvious bugs, I gotta say, this still like looks really good for a game that has been whipped up in not a lot of time at all using pretty much exclusively AI-driven prompts and just good old JavaScript. And I think just two packages, 3JS to make WebGL easier to play with and Simplex Noise for the terrain generation. But given that I can go right ahead and build the classic like night one Minecraft house in this thing. Like I am super pleased with the results of this. I honestly did not know how far we'd get. Look at that. That's a beautiful house. You wish you had a house that nice. It's got this one room. I could spend a lot of time on this refining it, like making the water appear more correctly and adding water flow physics and fixing the issue where some chunks just decide not to load even though you're close to them. <laughs> or like the phasing through the wall thing. Obviously we can add crafting and weapons and mobs and clouds and all that good stuff. But given that this feels very similar to the classic.minecraft.net vibe over here, we have blocks that that one doesn't have. We can dig down into the ground and find coal. And when you dig up coal, it goes into your inventory for you to use. We have things that the alpha build didn't have, which is amazing to say. By the way, I'm gonna throw this game up on my website as is right now for free, obviously. Can't make you pay for this, but it'll be at mine.coulterpeterson.com. So if you want to play around with this or drop a comment down below, if you want to link to the source code so you can hack around with this yourself, feel free. If we want to make this some kind of open source Minecraft clone project thing, like I'm down. And speaking of later improvements, let me know in the comments if you would like a part two of this video and for us to keep expanding this and adding those elements we talked about earlier. Maybe you're a developer and you have some recommendations on better collision detection to add or packages we can add that would save it some time and that kind of stuff. But I'll leave it there for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you want to help out the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.